everybody, and actually good morning to everybody. Welcome on this Saturday morning, and uh, we're going to start at 182. We got a little surprise here this morning. Tristan Pika starts off on a quick 8-2 run, and now uh, picks up the pin at a minute 23. And once again, we are in semifinals at 182 pounds, and of course, that is the one bracket. I did not get run off, so I do apologize. But Tristan Pikas in the semifinals picks up the victory at 182 pounds. We're going to be running uh, semifinals. We'll run down those semifinal matches for you. Once again, uh, we had started at 182 pounds this morning. So I thought I had a little bit of time, got up here, and Tristan Picus was already out onto the mat. So he picks up a big pin for himself. He gets into the championship at 182 pounds. We'll uh, pull up the uh, that bracket. As I said, I ran up all the brackets except for that one. So I'm not sure what happened there, but we'll get into the brackets. We'll run down all the semifinal matches that'll be coming up. And it looks like we have Jennifer Verdon coming out. I'm gonna throw some girls in here. We'll go back to 182. And as Tristan picks up a win, and once again, uh, they're not in a uh, bracketed tournament. It's still in pool play. But right now, Tristan Picas sitting in the driver's seat at 182 pounds. As Tristan went one, two, three, four, no yesterday, and will pick up his fifth victory today. So we get to Jennifer Verdon now. <clears throat> this is the uh, girls part portion of the tournament. And we'll also bring up that bend right away. Averting going to get down on a quick takedown. And lead it here 2-0 early in this one. Now we'll stand back up. And Verdon going to take her back down 4-1. A lot of girls here at this tournament. And Verdon now going to let her back up. We'll now lead it four to two. Verdon uh, looking at a shuck by now. He's going to take it right to her back. Nice move by Jennifer Verdon. Looks like she's going to pick up a fall here with a minute 12 to go here in this first period. Oh, going to let her back up here. Going to get the three. Verdon in the 100 to 105 pound weight class. This will be Verdon's uh, third match. Going to take her to her back once again. Verdon wrestling Claire O'Leary of McLaughlin and will pick up the pin at 108. So Verdon wins by pin in 108 at 100 pounds for the girls' division. Verdon will have Micaiah McFarland next round. And that will be it. She did have a bye earlier. So four girls in there, five girls in there. Verdon sitting uh, one win away from a championship in the Nighthawk Classic. Gonna wrestle a few more girls matches here. Our other match will be, I believe, Achillea Olsen here. We'll get back out of here, get into some more brackets. As Akalia came in, I believe. I'll get the brackets up real quickly for you here as Akalia Olson. Look kind of looking around to see if she's warming up somewhere. Uh, she was at 110 pounds. She picked up a bye and a win by pin yesterday. And she will have a match against Adali Simmons of Kildare. A win there will mean a championship for Akalia. 
at 110 pounds. Looking back at the boys now, semifinals. Hard six pound, Cutter Rodnick of Bowman Beach taking on Dane Humes of Moorcroft. Caleb Smith against Jack Bomback of Kildare. Once again, there's also gonna be consolation semifinals in each round. 113. <clears throat> Riley Hasbrook into the semifinals. He'll take on Jack Phelan of My Miles City. Other side of the bracket, Liam Albrecht of Kildare will take on Taryn Zabrowski of Sturgis Brown. For Lemon, uh, they do have Max Anderson. He is in the consolation semis today. 120 pound weight class. Kyler Shaleski in the semifinals. He will take on Tegan Zabrowski of Sturgis. Gage Anderson of Lemon will take on John Jeffrey of Spearfish in the semifinals at 120 pounds. 126 pound weight class. Nighthawks have nobody. Cash Sheely in the consolation semis. Nighthawks were open at 126. 132 Nighthawks also open at 132. Uh, Caleb Sarsland from Bowman Beach into the semis. He's taking on Riley Davis of Baker. 138-pound weight class. Nighthawks also open. And at 145, Jaron Frank in the semis. He'll take on Ethan Dennis of Watford City. In one part of the semis, Colby Sperry in the consolation semis taking on Keenan Huber of Dawson County. 152 pound weight class, Devin Greff in the semis against Tucker Bomback of Kildare, Emery Knoll and Chris Boardman wrestling on the other side of the bracket. 160 pounds. Carter Sarslin in the consolation semis. Nighthawks open at 160. Nighthawks open at 170. Uh, Emmett Mahar of Lemon into the uh, consolation semis. Nick Anderson. Uh, Nick yesterday went three and zero, and he will have looks like one or two more matches today. Once again, I do apologize. Uh, did not get the last few weight classes run off. But uh, we do have coming up a Kaylee Olson against a Dally Simmons for the championship at 110 pounds. Once again, she is from Kildare. And that one should be coming up here momentarily. We're going to take a break, hear from our sports sponsors, and be back with wrestling action right after this.
welcome back here. And Akalia Olson checking in against Dally Simmons. Right away throws the headlock. Simmons going to fight through it and get the two points. Kaylee had just slipped off on that headlock, and now Simmons going to go aggressively across the face, and looks like a little blood. That coming from Simmons. So a little blood time here, so let's take a quick 30 and be back. You still have blood time for Simmons. She's down to about two and a half minutes here. Can't get the uh, blood to, uh, to stop. Simmons got caught on that headlock. I think that's what uh, kind of sprung the uh, the nosebleed. Uh, but Kaylee going to put her warm up back on and wait for Simmons to get all cleaned up. This will be our last girls match, I believe, this round. This is for the championship for Akalia. She already beat the other girl, three girls in her weight class. Jennifer Verdon will have one more match uh, later on this morning, and that will be also for the championship. But yeah, she's still, still getting cleaned up. I think they got her now. Then we'll get into the semifinals for the boys. And I think Tristan's match, uh, they don't have a bracketed tournament there, so that was just another uh, round of wrestling at 182. We'll get into the semifinals. And here we go. I think Simmons is ready finally. All right, looks like she's ready, and here we go. All right, so Olson will go down. She trails it here 2 0. They stopped the blood time at 2.34, but I think it was a lot longer than that. We're a minute 40 in. Kaylee with a nice little sit out, but Simmons going to follow her through. Another sit out, trying to do a chin drop with Simmons. And now Kaylee going to grab that right leg, see if she can. Now she's going to grab the head now. Got to be careful. Got to be careful, Akalia, because she comes back. You could be heading to your back here. Now she's going to let go of the leg and get back to her base. 
2 0 the score. Simmons leads it over Kalia Olson of the Nighthawks. Simmons thrown in those legs. And now Kalia just trying to stand up here, but just can't. She's got the, the head, the headlock on, but can't get enough. Simmons is not letting her bring it over, and now she does have to let go of the head. Still trailing at 2-0 here with 50 seconds to go here in the quarter. As Olsen trying to get to her base. She's on her knees trying to uh, get Simmons off her, but Simmons directly right behind her here, slapping those arms away. Not a lot of action here with 30 seconds. So now, as I say that, Akalia going to her back. Oh, Simmons just worked it. Going to send Akalia Olsen to her back, but Akalia going to pop out. And we'll get reversed. They're going to get three back points. No reversal points yet for Olsen, but now Simmons going to come back around and stay in just a little bit better position here. Now they're going to be clasping on Akalia Olsen, I think. Down to two seconds, and that'll end our first period. No, nope, they're going to call on Simmons. So Kaylee gets a point at the end here. That's a big point for her. Got thrown to her back. Trails at five to one. Oh, Olsen will choose, or I believe Simmons had a uh, choice, so she goes down to start the period. And I think we're gonna have a caution here. All right, here we go. Olsen back up on top, trailing at 5-1. Simmons gonna do a quick sit here. Kaylee kind of slipped off here, but uh, regains. Trying to stay away from Simmons, who's trying to grab that back leg. Kaylee doing a nice job staying behind Simmons, but has to work something here. Now, trying to hook up. But Peterson is Simmons, but Kaylee feeling that. Really stretching out now, nice job. Throwing her back to her base. 30 seconds into the second period. 5-1 Simmons. This is for the championship here. At 110 pounds in the girls division. Then I believe we'll get into the semifinals after this round of girls. As Akali trying to run the header now, potentially dangerous going to be called. As Olsen tried to run the head on the uh, run the half. So six to one our score. Olsen trailing it by five on the penalty point. Now Olsen gonna run that half again here, but Simmons gonna peel it off. Nice job by Simmons, just keeping the half off. And now, and another, oh, another potentially dangerous. And that's gonna be another penalty point. So they'll make it now seven to one in favor of Simmons. Another warning up on top. Kaylee a little bit jumping the gun there. So here we go, back to 57 seconds to go. Olsen trying to run the half here. Trying to run it, get to the side. She's hit, got with, hit with two penalty points. She just can't touch hands here. She's holding on to the wrist. Simmons just doing a nice job. Zakalia really running that half. Just having a tough time with Simmons with 30 seconds to go. Simmons not gonna go over too easily. And now has an inside cradle somehow hook up. And Simmons gonna roll through that. Now they have to break the hold up. Simmons just gonna buck her right off and gets the two, nine to one now. An eight point lead now for Simmons. And that's how the second period is gonna end, nine to one. Once again, after this, we'll take a break, send it back to the studios for a bit, and then come back with semifinals 
after this round of wrestling, another blood timeout. So let's take a quick break here on KNEC Hedinger and be back. All right, welcome back. 9-1 the score. Simmons leads it by eight, but can't get the blood to stop. They cut her blood time already. They're just kind of uh, cleaning her up right now. Olsen trailing it here by eight. Both will start off in neutral position here. I believe it was Olsen's choice. Has those uh, two fingers wrapped up pretty heavily here, so Olsen has an injured hand. Simmons gonna push the action and they both go out of bounds. Nine won the score. Back center circle. Nice defense by Olsen as Simmons took a shot. Kayla's gonna have to do something here, gonna have to have a throw here. Either that or gonna have to have a couple quick takedowns and back points to get back into this thing. Down eight. Olsen still trying to hook up on that headlock here, but Simmons knows it's coming. And there it is, but she's gonna slip off. And Simmons will get the two-point takedown, and now we'll throw Akalia to her back. Nope, Olsen gonna get back to her base here, down 11 to one. And now she's going to her belt. You're gonna roll right through. Nice job by Olsen to stay off of her back. With a minute five to go here in the first, or the third period. Trailing at 13-1. Olsen trying a tripod stand up here. Now Simmons, oh, she's gonna grab that head. She has it. If she could just step over, nope. Now uh, Simmons just battles back. Just the power of Simmons. Reversed it and threw Akalia to her back, but now they're gonna roll through, now making it 15 to two. As Akalia will get the escape, 34 seconds to go here in the period. As Simmons, no matches on this other mat yet. Not sure what's going on. Akalia trailing it by 13 here, 20 seconds to go. So it looks like Olsen's gonna finish second place in this year's tournament at the Nighthawk Classic. Simmons will shoot in. She'll finish things off here, leading at 15 to two. And that's how the period's gonna end. It'll be a final score, 15 to two as Adele Simmons will win it here over Akalia Olson. All right, with that, we're gonna take a break. Come back with the boys semifinals here in a little bit. No set time, so uh, just stay tuned. We'll listen to some more music and be back here on KNDC Hedinger. And don't forget girls basketball action this afternoon. B squad starting at two o'clock. We'll have varsity at 3.30. We will not have that game on KDC. We should be into the finals here at the uh, Nighthawk Classic. So just bear with us here. Hopefully we'll have that action for you later this afternoon. Send it back to the studios and be back with more wrestling action in just a bit.
Registration is still on contract. Look up 2023. Take your Huskies early bird. Registration is now open, but will be closing early this afternoon. We'd love to have you. Extend your stay in our beautiful city. Huskies early bird, tomorrow. Thank you.
All right, good afternoon or still good morning to you uh, from the Nighthawk Classic. And we do apologize for that long layoff. Had some problems with track wrestling. That uh, first round of girls went a little bit longer than what expected. And it sounds like we're going to do another round. We got the track wrestling fixed. Going to do another round of the girls, the final round of the girls, which we will not have any coverage of. I don't see Jennifer Verdon around. Uh, she's undefeated, uh, but I don't see her around. We will have the semifinals coming up later on this afternoon, expecting to be started here by 1130, 12 o'clock. So we once again, we do apologize. Um, just didn't uh, just didn't get everything with track wrestling acting up. Uh, things are running a lot later than expected. Bowden Hasbrook will wrestle in the semifinals. He will have Gray Gilbert. Gilbert out of Harding County. That was the one bracket I did not have. But once again, uh, we do have semifinals coming up here on KDC Headinger. Dave will be up here. I'll be on the road over to uh, uh, Scranton for girls basketball uh, versus Trenton. That will start at 2 o'clock for JV. Varsity set for right around 3.30. So once again, semifinals will include Riley Hasbrook and Kyler Shalesky, Jaron Frank, Devin Greff, Uh, let's see here. I'm just making notes for Dave. Uh, Tristan Picus, Nick Anderson, and Bowden Hasbrook are all in the semifinals. Winners will move on to the uh, championship matches. And you can hear those on KNEC Headinger. What we're going to do, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have semifinal action. Dave will be up here, I'm thinking roughly around 11.30, quarter to 12, give or take some time. And uh, we'll, we're just kind of at the mercy of track wrestling. Uh, now that we're up and running, uh, we will get things rolling for you here on KNDC Edinger. So tune back in about 11.30 for more wrestling action here on KNDC 1490 AM, 106.7 FM, and Stream Team on YouTube.
the whole long run. Anderson, Lemon, Jeffrey, Spearfish.
coaches, boys and girls weigh-in sheets are, are available on stage. Boys and girls weigh-in sheets are available. Like uh, 
Yeah, he's the only uh, wrestler going on into the semifinals at 152. And a Blackwell will drop down into uh, uh, the JV section, I believe. So then we uh, jump up to 182. Let's see here. We will have uh, Tristan Picas going. I don't have him from the New York Wrestling. Uh, semi uh, at 220 will be Golden Hasbrook. He will be taking on Gray Gilbert from Harding County. Uh, not seeing the 195, so as soon as I find that with uh, Nick Anderson, we will pass that along um, as we do get that information. So once again, we are in the you are around the mat, including the corners, you need to take a knee. Riley, now please. Coming up at 113 pounds, and we'll jump right into uh, Tyler Shalesky as we go through the semifinals. And we will keep everybody updated. Uh, as the Nighthawk Classic continues on, so we'll see you in just a little bit with Riley Hasbro at 113 
Welcome back to the Nighthawk Classic. Phelan's going to choose down. He's going to hit a quick escape. That's going to move the score now to two to one. And now Hasbro and Phelan in the neutral position. Both guys trying uh, for position. Hasbro has had success with that single. Now Phelan going to shoot in on a single, go to a double. He's going to be in a little bit better position than Hasbro. Now Hasbro's going to reach through the, the legs. Hang on. He's got 44 seconds to go here. He doesn't want to give up a takedown. We want to see a stalemate. And Riley doing a great job of fighting off this double leg by Phelan. And there's the stalemate. So luckily for Riley, the stalemate, but he's got to be continuing to shoot. Because Phelan has been in on some great shots. And Riley needs to open that up with his single into a double. Like he did in that first period and was able to pick up that takedown. So 2-1, Hasbrook still in control. There's that shot by Hasbrook, nice job. Front headlock thrown in by Phelan. 12 seconds to go, second period. Now Hasbrook again on that single. Let's see if he can score. He's gonna try to turn the corner. Oh, Phelan tosses him, and he's gonna pick up two. So Phelan's gonna pick up two right at the end of that period. We'll keep it right here. Nice hip toss by Phelan, and luckily Bo, uh, Riley was able to get back to his stomach and not give up near fall points. So going into the third period, 3-2, Phelan, Miles City leads it over Hasbrook. So Hasbrook will be in the down position. Phelan going to try to throw in that chicken wing. Riley's got to clear the hands and work up. Escape will tie it. Reversal puts him in the lead. Now Phelan going to throw in that half. Hasbro trying to get up to his base. Phelan going to grab that arm and bring him right back down. Phelan again now going to throw in that chicken wing. Riley's got to clear the hands. Oh, he's got a chicken wing and a half. Oh my goodness, he's got Hasbro on his back. That was a nice shot by Phelan. He's got Hasbro in trouble. Now he's gonna sit through his Phelan. So he's gonna pick up at least three. And Riley right now trying to clear the arms. And uh, now Phelan again gonna throw that half in with that chicken wing. He hasn't got his points yet because he still has it in. He's gonna do it again. Oh, and he tries to pull him on top. And Hasbrook's gonna come through. And he's gonna pick up a reversal. Let's see here. Yeah, so Phelan tried that again. So where, where we stand right now, 6-4, Phelan. He tried that same move and pulled Hasbrook over the top, and Riley was able to pick up two on the reversal, but he still does trail at 6-4. 35 seconds to go, third period. Hasbrook on top. So he's going to have to make a decision here. Do I turn him? And how long do I go before I let him go and i got to take him down? So Riley's got to make that decision. He's going to try to throw in a power half. Now Phelan going to try to stick out the back door. Hasbro getting a little bit high. Yeah, he got a little bit high. Now Phelan going to come out the back door. And he's going to pick up two, it looks like. Should pick up. There's two on the reversal. That moves the score to eight to four. And again, a nice match put in by both Phelan from Miles City and Hasbrook. And Hasbrook will go down 8-4, so Phelan moves on to the championship. Riley will move back down, and he'll be going for third and fourth later on. We'll take a 30-second timeout, and we'll be back with Kyler Shalesky at 120 pounds. Just heard Riley Hasbrook. He went down. 
a score of eight to four. Failing for the Valley, uh, excuse me, Miles City. So eight four is your score. As Phelan moves on, and Hasbrook again will go in for a third and four. Tyler Shalewski going to take the mat. He's got to take on a tough Sturgis Brown wrestler in Tegan Sabrowski. So Sabrowski and Shalewski will be going at 120. And with that a bit, a bit of good news. And again at 145, we will be having Jaron Frank take on Ethan Dennis. Just trash. 152 pounds. I know. Uh, we'll have Devin so Kraft again taking on Tucker Bomback. So we're going to put a pause on it until the track comes back up. Uh, Give us a second. Something. I'm sorry, I just missed the talk here. I think something happened again with track wrestling. So we have to put it on hold as something happened with the bracketing again as we're waiting for Shalesky. Jerry, are you loaded? And no, okay. So what we're doing is we're going to have to wait for track wrestling. Um, unfortunately, that's where we're at right now. You have technology. Uh, when it works, it's awesome. When it doesn't, uh, pretty frustrating. So we will wait. When we do come back when ready to roll, we will have Shalesky and Zabrowski from Sturgis Brown. But by the way, just to clarify, this is the entire country. It's not just us. Rotary's down, we're down, everybody's down. The terrorists have won, everybody rejoice.
What's that? Jerry. What's wrong? Toilet paper again? Okay, I'll call Jeff. Thank you.
But this year for the girls' division, we have this custom-made trophy. These roses were made by our own coach, Cody Tomac. And this is going to be the first place prize for our girls' division this year. So I want to give a big round of applause to Coach Tomac for putting in that work. These are metal sculpted roses. Pretty cool. As we're ready to roll, we got some of the technical difficulties out of the way, and we are ready to roll at 120. Tyler Shalesky and Tegan Zabrowski. Zabrowski comes in from Sturgis Brown High School, and Shalesky going to shoot in on a single, go to a double. He's in on a good penetration. Zabrowski going to pull the hips back, and that was a great shot by Shalesky early on. Both of these guys very. 120 pounds. Zabrowski going to shoot in on a single. He's going to come out the back door. Shalesky hanging on to the legs. No change of position. No score as of yet. Now Zabrowski going to change around. He's going to grab between the legs. Pick up two on the takedown. So the first two will go to Zabrowski. Again comes in from Sturgis Brown High School. Now he's going to throw on a cradle. Shalesky needs to clear the hands, which he does. So your score is 2 0. Zabrowski from Sturgis Brown leading it over Shalesky. 2 0. Minute four to go, first period. Zabrowski in on a tight, deep waist, looking for that arm. Tyler trying to clear the hands. Now Zabrowski's going to let Tyler go right near the edge of the mat. He's going to shoot in, and off the mat we go. So no change of position. 2 to 1 as Tyler picked up one on the escape. Oh, I guess not. So he uh, get, let him go, and then he was right back in on top of him. So no escape. Now he's going to let him go. So two to one is your score. Still no point. Okay. Still on control is what they're saying. So he's got to let him go a little bit longer is what is what the official is saying in terms of uh, losing control. Even though he faced him, Zabrowski was still in control. So we still sit at 2 to 0. And Zabrowski's tried to let Shalesky go twice and then take him back down. So no change of position. And we've got blood on 
Shalesky. So with all that said and done, we're still at two to zero. Blood time Shalesky will be back with more action at the Hedinger Classic on KNDC 1490. the Hedinger Classic as Shalesky has all the blood uh, cleaned up. 120 pounds, semi-final action. Zabrowski leads it over Shalesky 2-0, 12 seconds to go first period. And that's where the first period is going to end as Shalesky is going to trail 2-0. We'll just keep it right here. And on the coin toss, well, they're checking the uh, blood again. Looks like we're okay. And uh, the coin toss will go towards Shalesky. And he will defer. Broski's going to take down. So defer means that Shalesky will have his choice third period. Broski will be in the down position. He does lead it 2 0. And here we go. Second period, Zabrowski going to hit a stand up right away. And he's going to come into a nice little switch. He's going to come around and he's going to pick up some uh, reversal. Just about had Shalesky towards his back. So credit Kyler. Oh, now he's got him hooked up with the legs. And Kyler's going to roll through and no near fall points. That's a good call by the official. 4-0. Oh, he is going to give him two. So he did count it. Did count, uh, the, uh, you have to have a two count to get two points, which uh, he did. So that's going to move the score to six to zero. Still in control is Zabrowski. Six zero. Shalesky uh, trying to clear the hands. Got to keep that head up off the mat. And he doesn't want to step over. Now Zabrowski is going to grab that arm, try to work some kind of chicken wing series. A minute five to go. As Zabrowski he does have that chicken wing hooked up, and he's going to try to walk around the head. And he's going to walk Shalesky towards his back, so he's going to pick up some near fall points. Is Zabrowski. Tell you what, this Tegan Zabrowski, he's a good looking wrestler for Sturgis Brown High School. And Shalesky right now doing everything he can to keep that shoulder up. And Zabrowski is going to pick up a fall. So 38 seconds to go, second period. Zabrowski does pick up the ball, so Shalesky will drop down into third and fourth. So good tournament put in by Shalesky, having a chance to be in the top four here at the Nighthawk Classic. So looking around right now, we're going to be waiting, it looks like, until 145 pounds as Jaron Frank will be taking on Ethan Dennis for the Watford City Wolves. So stay tuned to the Hedinger Classic we, here on KNDC 1490 for more action okay, throughout the day. See you later.
In the hole on one is Terry Moorcroft, Daniel Sturgis. In the hole on two, Pennington, Moorcroft, Ramos, Killian.
coach from Standing Rock, please come up to that table.
In the hole on two, Shrimp, trying to go mute, Arnegard, Watford City. In the hole on one, Gray, Warcroft, Bamba, Kildare.
Welcome back to the Nighthawk Classic as we're in semi-final action. So far, at this point, we have had Riley Hasbrook go down by the score of 8-4 to four to Phelan from Miles City, and Kyler Shalesky was pinned by Zabrowski from Sturgis in 3 minutes and 22 seconds. Right now, we're waiting on Jaron Frank, so we'll be back in 30 with Jaron Frank.
Yeah. So let me here, let me Alright, because I'm doing this right, I'm going five, six, seven, two, eight, eight, nine. And then and then it rings twice, right? And then you go five eighths, and then the pound. Oh, and then hit the pound once you hit the music. And then they go the three zeros and the one. Okay, well let me try it. Well, I get a busy signal. So, okay. Yeah, I'm disconnected right now. Okay. and then I wait for the music and then I hit pound. Okay, after the music. Yeah. Yeah. And I hear a and then and then I don't hear any music though. But once I hear the music then hit the pound. No. So I'll try it again here. But after I hit the music then hit pound and then the three zeros and one, right? Okay. Let me let okay. All right, thanks, Matt. Bye. Okay,
in the hole now to Matt Lemon, Raleigh Baker. In the hole now, Lauren Hostetler, Gossip County, Ellison, Miles City. All right, coming up at 152 pounds, semi-final action, we're gonna have Devin Greff. Devin Greff's gonna be taking on Tucker Bumbach from Kildare. Having a little bit of technical difficulties on KNDC, so we will get that uh, figured out for you. Thank you to those listeners that have been calling in. So we're gonna do this uh, via the stream team, and then we'll get those fixed on KNDC. Uh, as quickly as we can. So Bombach and Greff go off the edge of the mat. This is again semifinals at 152 pounds. Jaron Frank was defeated by a score of 10 to seven by Dennis from Watford City. Also Kyler Shaleski was defeated by Zabrowski from Sturgis. And at 113 pounds, Riley Hosbrook was defeated by Phelan from Miles City 8-4. So again, Greff and Bombach. This is to get into the championship. Greff gonna shoot down on a double leg, try to go to a single. Bombach gonna come around the back door. He's gonna pick up two. So he's gonna lead it 2-0. Also coming up, we will have Pekus, Anderson, and Bowden Hasbrook. As we get those uh, matches set up, we will continue to do it on stream team. And then hopefully again, we will get back on KNDC as quickly as we can. And we will have some type of injury stoppage. It's like blood on the elbow, so we will have a little bit of injury time for Devin Greff. 
We're not sure when they will do the next round of girls. Uh, also down in the small gym, they are doing, uh, continue to do the JV matches as well. So once we get that information, we will be uh, set to go all the way around in terms of wrestlebacks and then into the championship matches. I don't know if they're going to do the girls along with the guys or uh, we'll, we'll find that information out um, as soon as we can. All right, so Greff got that uh, elbow, a little bit of tape on there. Doesn't look like any pre wrap so that's going to be fun to take off. So Greff and Bombach ready to get back at it here. Down 2-0 is Greff. Tucker Bombach will come in, and here we go. Greff going to stand up, try to clear the hands. Bombach going to bring him right down to the mat. Brings that arm back into a chicken wing series. 58 seconds to go, first period. Bombach leads it over Greff. Tanner Blackwell was also in the 152 pounds. He is uh, in down in the wrestlebacks in the small gym. Kind of nice where you can have a couple of wrestlers in each weight class. Right near the edge of the mat, 36 seconds to go. Bombach going to try to throw in a half Nelson. He's going to have Greff in trouble. He's got Greff on his back, and he's got plenty of time. He's got 27 seconds, and there's the fall. So Bombach will move on into the championship at 152 pounds as he pins Devin Greff in one minute and 35 seconds. So Greff will go back into third and fourth, and Bombach will go into the championship at 152 pounds. So again, stay tuned. We will try to get you back on KNDC. I will continue to go on stream team. Uh, next up, we will be waiting for Tristan Picas at 182 pounds. Spearfish. 
in the whole match too. Dean Felder, Gosford County, McCartney, Lemon. On map, map one, Zilla, Gosford County, Erion, Sturgis. On deck, map one, Dirt, Sturgis, Schluck, Spearfish. And in the whole map one, Paxson, Miles City, Ray, Sturgis.
in the hole plus one on that one. Anderson, Hedinger, Eagle, standing rock. So all those that are listed on map one, upcoming, we may start reassigning to map two, so get warmed up. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as we've been having some technical difficulties and hopefully we're back on track here. Just to kind of summarize what's uh, occurred up to this point in the semifinals, uh, Riley Hasbrook at 113 pounds was defeated by Phelan from Miles City by a score of 8-4. to four. At 120 pounds, Kyler Shalesky was pinned by Zabrowski from Sturgis in, the minute, in 3 minutes and 22 seconds. At 145 pounds, Jaron Frank was defeated 10 to 7 by Dennis from Watford City. 152 pounds, Devin Greff. Devin was lo uh, lost by fall in 1 minute and 35 seconds uh, to Bombach from Kilder. And that's where we stand at this time. Uh, we are going to be waiting here for Tristan Pinkus, uh, Nicholas Anderson, and Bowden Hasbro. Uh, as we were waiting to get back on the line, Talking about going right into the placing matches uh, on both maps. So they will do like, uh, I believe they're bringing in to 6th and 7th, 3rd uh, and 4th, 5th and 6th, 7th and 8th, excuse me. So they will do those on, the, on both maps. Then they will go uh, into the varsity um, championship matches. On one side, they will have the guys' championship matches. On the other map, they will have the girls. So as you're watching, on, uh, we do have stream team accessibility. Make sure you go on there. They do have the mats. They have all four mats. Both of the little gym, uh, three and four, and then one and two in the big gym. Um, and then we will uh, continue to feed the mic here for the stream team. And hopefully we can keep everybody uh, on, the, on the radio today. Something happened where it pulls up in the station. So and thanks to Sean and Nolan to get us back on. And uh, hopefully we can get... Uh, get some more wrestling action before uh, we have any more problems. Uh, it has been a long morning and a long afternoon so far. We had uh, some difficulties with track wrestling. Those of you that aren't familiar with that, it's a program that goes through and uh, it sets up all of the different uh, matches. It gives the results right away. Um, and it wasn't just the matches in Henry, it was the Rotary and Bismarck, it was the uh, Castleton uh, um, wrestling tournament, uh, Mayville, all over the state and all over the nation, something happened. Uh, so uh, nothing that uh, was just a local problem, something with track wrestling. So hopefully that can continue to work properly so we can get through uh, uh, these matches. Still a lot of good matches right now on one map. We're at 170, over on the other we're at 220. So uh, I'm thinking that Tristan, uh, Bowden, um, and Nicholas are probably going to be all on the same map. As we uh, continue on, so let's stay tuned here to KMBC, and we'll bring you some more action from the classic in just a little bit. In the whole match, two, Herka, 
Sturgis, Dorsich, Mortrop.
as Nick Anderson getting ready to take on Polizzo Eagle from Standing Rock. So Eagle and Anderson, 195 pounds, 182 pounds, Tristan uh, Picas, he will wrestle in the championship match. So they did a, a different bracketing at 182. So he will uh, take on a very, uh, very good wrestler from uh, uh, Sturgis Brown High School in the championship match, so we'll get you his name as uh, we get ready to do those championship matches. So Eagle and Anderson at 195 to see who goes into the championship round. Coming up will be Bowden Hasbrook. He will take on Gray Gilbert out of Harding County. So good, two tough matchups for uh, Anderson and Hasbrook. Anderson gonna shoot in on a single. Eagle gonna come around. Let's see here, Anderson still has the leg. No change yet, Helixio Eagle in a little bit better position. No, now Anderson in good position. And he's gonna turn the corner and if he can pull his head out, Nick will pick up some points, but Eagle hanging on to that head. Still no, oh, there's the two. So a takedown for Anderson. He just needs to pull his head out. And right now, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna say that was an illegal headlock. But did not touch the hand, so it was not illegal. 41 seconds to go. Anderson leads Eagle two to zero. Once again, we're in the semifinals. Uh, again, a little bit later because of some difficulties with track wrestling. Uh, so uh, that's why we uh, are having a little bit of a delay. They will be doing the placing matches on both mats right after this for uh, 7th and 8th, 34, 5th and 6th, and then we're going to the championship rounds. Girls on one mat, guys on the other. 10 seconds to go. Anderson still leads it 2-0 over Ho. 
Alixo Eagle from Eagle, or excuse me, Standing Rock. And that's where the first period's gonna end. We'll be back in 30 with Nick Anderson. because Anderson looks like he might be going to be picking up two here as they went neutral. Still no control either way. There's two for Anderson, so he's going to lead it 4-0 to zero over Polixo Eagle from Standing Rock. So a nice shot by Anderson as he put, uh, excuse me, took both up. I'm not seeing any blood. Somewhere we must have blood. Yep, there we go. Anderson's got a little bit as it was on the back of Eagle, uh, his back. So what they do here is they do take a little bit of blood time. They get so many uh, uh, seconds. Everybody says, well, how come they shut it down? Well, once you get the bleeding under control, uh, you do not, you do not uh, punish the wrestler for extra time as they clean up. So once that uh, initial blood has been taken care of, then they stop the time. They get a total of five minutes. Uh, injury slash blood. Uh, glad they changed that many years ago. There was not um, uh, a limit on blood time. There would be some matches that would take forever. Um, and then what they did is they uh, they had a, a time limit and uh, makes them go a little bit quicker, do a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work on that. And then what they do is they have to get everything off of the mat. So once again, uh, Picas will be in the championship. Um, going to look up here who that's going to be against. It's going to be against uh, Dean, oops, let's uh, back that up, Reese Jacobs. So Jacobs from Sturgis, a uh, very, uh, very good wrestler for Sturgis. Uh, he'll be taking on Picas in the championship. So here we go. Back to Anderson and uh, Polixo Eagle. Anderson in control, 4-0. Eagle uh, is on the bottom right now. We're not sure whose choice it will be third period. Uh, that could come into play as we start to see this match go on. And Anderson ooh, picking up, just about picked up some near fall points. So credit Nick Anderson working diligently, working a uh, little uh, little shoulder shrugs, uh, little tip. We call them cheap tilts. Just all you got to do is expose the back uh, for 20, or excuse me, two two seconds, and you're going to get three points. Um, so uh, we'll see here uh, what he's going to continue to do right now. 15 seconds to go second period. Eagle looks like he wants to do some kind of roll. Nick's got to be aware of that. Keep the weight back. So nice job by Nick controlling the upper body and the hips. So Nick Anderson's going to lead this one 4-0 going into the third period. And we're going to find out whose choice it is. It is Anderson's. He's going to choose up. So Nick Anderson feels that he can keep Polixo Eagle from scoring. And right away, Eagle is trying a little bit of a sit out. Anderson going to control the leg. Oh, Eagle, no, oh, nice switch by Eagle. And he's going to throw Anderson towards his back. But nice job by Nick to get back to his stomach. And there was that move we were kind of been waiting for. Eagle's been trying to set up that little roll, and there he did a switch and just about caught Anderson on his back. So credit Nick Anderson getting back to his stomach and not giving up near fall points. Now Nick needs to keep moving. He's up four to two, and right now looks like Eagle's a little bit tired right now. Okay, so four to two is your score. Minute 10 to go, third period. Anderson gonna try to stand up. Eagle brings him right back down. 
And he's going to throw in a half Nelson as Eagle. One minute to go, third period. Nick leads us by two. So what he wants to do is do exactly what he's doing right now. Let Eagle keep working. As, uh, they're backing up somebody from the mat there. There we go. It's a non-coach. And off the mat we go, so we're going to restart. 48 seconds to go. Eagle trails it 4-2 to two to Anderson. And right off the bat, Anderson going to try to set up a roll. Eagle comes back. Set up a roll. Eagle comes back through. Kind of hanging on. Anderson in really good position right now. Eagle uh, very tired and just kind of hanging on. Anderson trying to set up some kind of roll. He does lead it, so he doesn't have to get out of control. He doesn't want to put himself in any situation where Eagle can score, because Nick leads it by two. So Anderson leads it four to two, 18 seconds to go. Eagle doing Anderson a favor here, just kind of riding it out. And uh, yeah, so Nick looks like he's going to move on to the championship here at 195. So credit Nick Anderson coming out. He's going to be a finalist at 195 as he defeats Helix Helixio Eagle by a score of four to two. So nice job by Anderson. All right, so uh, looks like we're going to have another 195 pounder. So let's go back to the station for uh, a few more sponsors, and we'll get closer to Bowden Hasbrook as he'll be taking on Dre Gilbert from Harding County.
two on the takedown, so he's going to lead at 2-0, 46 seconds to go, still in the first period. And now Stuber looks like he's going to throw those legs in. He's going to grab a 2-1-1, try to break him down. Both very strong wrestlers here at 220. And look over at Gilbert, too. He looks a little bit bigger than Hasbrook. So, uh, going to have a little bit of a tough afternoon, but... Uh, we know he'll get her done so he can get himself into that championship match against either Jules here or Stuber. Now Jules is going to try to come around and face him, and he will. He's going to get picked up one as Jules, so it's going to be the score down to two to one. May Stuber still in control? So right off the bat, both guys are just going to grab each other's head. We call that a tie, if you will. All right, so it looks like Gilbert and Hasbrook getting ready to go over. Got everything situated. So Gray Gilbert and Bowden Hasbrook. At the end of the first period over here, Mason Stuber, he leads it two to one over Jules from Sturgis Brown High School. And Stuber will be on top. All right, now over to Hasbrook and Gilbert. Uh, both 
both of these guys now are also going to try to tie up. Gilbert going to try to press down on the head, a little bit of a duck under, not going to do it. Now Hasbrook going to grab onto the head, right near the edge, and then try to keep him on. There's the officials going to say stay on the mat for this. Stuber still uh, leads it two to one. Well, now he's tied up as Jules picks up one on the escape. So Jules and Stuber now tied up at two. They're in the second period. Hasbrook and Gilbert still no score first period. One minute and 21 seconds to go. Either guy, either uh, Hasbrook or Jules has taken, or excuse me, Gilbert has taken any kind of real shot. He's been, uh, trying to get position right now. Going on back over, still two to two. Stuber and Jules, zero zero. Hasbrook and Gilbert. Hasbrook trying to go a two on one on the arm, trying to set something up. Gilbert going to grab onto the arm himself. Forty-one seconds to go with Hasbrook and Gilbert. Oh, Stuber in on a nice single. Line. So Stuber will pick up two on the takedown. He's going to lead it now four to two. So a nice shot by May Stuber. He leads over Jules four to two. 26 seconds to go. Back over to Hasbrook and Gilbert. Still no score, 20 seconds to go. Now Jules will pick up one on the escape. So four to three. Stuber still leads it over Jules from Sturgis Brown High School. Gilbert and Hasbrook no score. Five seconds to go for this period. And that's the way that, that period's going to end. Hasbrook and Gilbert. Jules and Stuber will go into the third period. Four to three. Stuber still leads it. Stuber will choose down. And right off the bat, Stuber going to come around, try to sit out. Jules going to grab the arm. He's going to go with two on one as Jules get out of the front, try to walk that arm back. Hasbrook will take top on Gilbert. Gilbert tries a little sit out right near the edge of that. Off they go. And uh, back over here, Jules has Stuber's arm back. He's going to try to throw in that chicken arm. Let me see if potentially dangerous as that arm comes across. Four to three, still your score. Stuber leads it back over to. Hasbrook and Gilbert's going to pick up one on the escape. So Gilbert picks up one. And uh, back over here, Stuber going to try to pick up a Peterson. Not to do it. Now he's going to try to face the rules. He leads it four to three. Minute 25 to go. Back over to Hasbrook and Gilbert. Still 1 0. Gilbert leads it. Now Stuber's going to pick up two on the takedown. So he's going to increase his lead now as he leads it six to three. Hey Stuber, nice little shot. Coming on until Duck Under picks up two more. Back over to Hasbrook. Gilbert still 1 0. Gilbert in control. Minute 12 to go. Second play. Stuber and Jules. 51 seconds to go. Third period. Both of these 220 matches, very good action for the bigger guys. Not a lot of, kind of dancing around, if you will. Now Jules going to pick up one on the escape, so Stuber leads it 6-4. to four. Jules still leads, excuse me, Gilbert still leads it over Hasbrook, 1-0. I believe it will be Bowden's choice third period. 28 seconds to go, second period, and he trails it by one. Stuber leads it by two, 22 seconds to go, third period. And, uh, I think Stuber realizes Jules is going to do a throw or something here. He's going to shoot him on single. Stuber, you know, he's got to stay active. He didn't know there's a stall call. There's a stall call right near the edge of the mat. Ooh, they hit him again. And he comes back in. And that's the way that's going to happen. Good call there. That's why we have the assistant official and it worked to decision there. Stuber does win it six to four over Jules. So Stuber will move on into the championship at 220. And over here with
Hasbrook and we have a little blood time, so let's take a little little time out. We'll be back in 30 with the Hasbrook. After our final semifinal match on Mac 2, we're going to be taking a short break for uh, worker relief, five to ten minutes, and then we'll get back with our seventh and eighth place matches uh, on both mats. Again, we're going to be doing seventh and eighth on both mats, fifth and sixth on both mats, third and fourth on both mats, and then our championship varsity boys will be on that one, varsity girls. Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic. Third period action as Hasbrook trails Gray Gilbert from Harding County 1-0. Gilbert in control and on top. So Bowden just needs one to tie it up. Two would win it for him. 130 to go, third period. Gilbert relentless on the top right now, just kind of controlling the arms and the hips. Doing a nice job. Good match by Stuber and Jules over there at 220. Man, two good, two good, two good kids. Two good kids going at it at 220. 1 5 to go. Hasbrook and Gilbert. between Gilbert and Hasbro. 45 seconds to go. Gilbert just happy to kind of go back and forth. Hasbrook's got the hips up. Now he's got to go. He's got 37 seconds to go. He trails it by one. Now Gilbert's going to intertwine the leg. Still working the one-on-one. -on -one. Now he's going to throw in a kind of a half Nelson as Gilbert. Just doing enough to stay busy. It looks like it's going to be Gilbert right now. Oh, a little injury time. And blood. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a lot of blood. All right. So Bowden's got a little blood time. Let's take a 30-second timeout, and we'll be back with Hasbro and Gilbert. Classic with Bowden Hasbrook. Uh, let's stop. Uh, he does trail at 1 0. Great Gilbert, uh, Harding County, leads him 1 0. And uh, he is on top. So Gilbert simply has to ride out uh, the period. Hasbrook needs either one or two. There we go. 18 seconds. Hasbrook provides a little, little roll. He's got to put two, two moves together. There we go. Got to put two moves together. Now Gilbert coming back through Hasbrook. Another one. There we go. Gilbert able to control that. So nice job by Gilbert. Now he's going to throw in a half. So it looks like it's going to be Gilbert and Stuber going at one, or two, 220 pounds in that championship match. Good match by Hasbrook and Ray Gilbert from Harding County. So here's what we got going. We're going to take about a 10 minute break, I think I heard correctly. And then they're going to do 7th and 8th place matches on both maps. All right, here we go. 5 10 minute break. Yep, they're going to do a 5 to 10 minute break. 7th and 8th place matches. And they're going to go 7th and 8th place matches. They're going to use both maps. So 106, 113, vice versa. They'll be back and forth. So we'll do 7th and 8th on both matches, 5th and 6th on both matches, 3rd and 4th on both matches. So it'll be continuously. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the championship of the guys on one map and the championship of the girls on the other map. Um, so you're going to hear a lot of wrestling. Uh, it should go fairly quick, uh, going back and forth. Uh, and as I say that, I hope I didn't jinx anybody. And hopefully uh, all the technical glitches are out with track wrestling and also on the radio here uh, and uh, on stream team. So a lot of things going on here at the gymnasium. There's been a lot of great wrestling. Uh, we've had... Uh, well over uh, 250 participants this year, 18 teams. Uh, pretty impressive. Girls division, JV division, and varsity division. So uh, uh, yeah, you've been probably seeing a lot of buses around, a lot of people in town. 
and that's awesome. That's what we love to see. And you're listening to all the action here on KBC. So thank those great sponsors that are making this happen for you. And we're going to take a little break, and we'll be back for more action here on KBC 14 May. Couple of quick announcements when we're on our break. There are a few raffle tickets available at our ticket table. We're going to be doing our drawing right before the championship matches. There's a few available still now at the ticket table. Also, coaches, your Calvin Steak Outstanding Wrestler Award and your Bert Berg Outstanding Wrestler Award are due before the
County.
Jehaven Moorcroft, Schaefer, Rodden. In the hole plus one, Mac two. Cutthroat, Moorcroft, close Baker. And in the hole plus two, Mac two. Kinzer, Rodden, White Mountain, McLaughlin.
four place matches. We're going to take a short break between rounds, so go ahead and start warming up on map two.
Ladies and gentlemen, there are only 12 tickets left. 12 tickets left on our raffle. to the Nighthawk Classic as we're in the third place matches, third and fourth. First up for Hedinger Scranton will be Bowden, excuse me, Riley Hasbrook. He'll be taking on Liam Albrecht from Kildare. So we'll have Shaleski, Frank, Greff wins by medical forfeit. Picus, Anderson in the championship, and then Bowden Hasbrook will also be in this third and fourth place round. So Riley Hasbrook and Liam Albrecht from Kildare. So what they're doing is they're doing the, uh, using all of these mats, so they'll go 106, 113, 120, 126, all the way through. So this will be a fairly quick round, and then they will do the 
championship matches for the girls on one mat and the championship matches for the guys on the other mat. Hasbro going to shoot in on a single, looks to go to a double. Albrecht going to pull his weight back right near the edge of the mat, and off we go. So no score. 113 pounds, 39 seconds to go, first period. It's kind of the first real shot that we've had by Hasbrook. Now he's going to drop him down into a front headlock. Bowden needs to come around. If he comes around and grabs that leg, he has a chance for a cradle. Albrecht going to grab that single leg, and then he's going to go to a double. So he's got Riley in a little bit of trouble. Riley needs to clear the hand. And he needs to stay off of his back. And right now, Albrecht in pretty good position, but credit Hasbrook as he tosses him off the edge. So no change of position, no score. Seven seconds to go, first period. Albrecht and Hasbrook. And that's the way the first period's gonna end with a score of zero to zero. We'll be back in 30 with Riley Hasbro. Hasbrook, he's going to take top, and he's got a couple of cradles hooked up. So let's see how many points he gets out of this. So he's going to pick up two as he kept the same pinning combination. So Riley's going to pick up two on the near fall. Nice cross face cradle put in by Hasbrook. Off the mat we go, so we'll restart in the center. Albrecht right away going to stand up, clear the hands. Riley forces him off. No change of position. And no points changed. So 2-0 is your score. And a nice cradle by Hasbrook right near the edge of the mat. Hasbrook right off the whistle, going to control the hands and the hips. Has kind of a chicken wing hooked up, and then he's going to go underneath the arm. Let's see if he can walk across. Riley's got him in a little bit of trouble. He needs to just take his time. There we go. He's got Albrecht on his back. And he's in a good position right there, and he's got plenty of time, does Hasbrook. He's got a minute five to go still in the second period. He just needs to settle in. Let's see if he can pick up a pin and third place at the Classic. Oh, now, now Albrecht gonna come back through the back. And Riley needs to let go of the head. Because right now, yeah, kind of a tough position right now as he kept the head. Now Albrecht gonna come out the back door, but Riley's gonna hang on to that leg. And let's see here. So no change anywhere. Riley's going to pick up a few more near fall points. It's 5-0. 26 seconds to go. Nice little flurry there by Albrecht and by Riley Hasbrook. Now Albrecht going to try to step over. He's got Riley in a little bit of trouble. Hasbrook's hanging on to that arm. Still hanging on to that leg. 10 seconds to go. Riley needs to hang on. He can't let him score here. If Albrecht gets his head out, he'll score. So nice job by Riley to keep that head entwined. Otherwise, he would have gave up a reversal. But we'll just keep it right here for third period action. Oh, we got blood. So we'll take a timeout. Hasbrook leads it 5-0. We'll be back in 30 with more action from the Hedinger Classic.
Welcome back to the Hedinger Classic as Albrecht had a little bit of a bloody nose. Liam Albrecht from Kildare again losing right now on the scoreboard. Bowden Hasbrook up 5-0. Nice little uh, cradle there that he had. Right near the edge of that, right near the end of that period. We had a pin on the other mat. Uh, somebody from Miles City picks up a pin. So uh, we'll take third place, wherever that is. I'll look up that for you. Back over to Hasbrook. He's going to come through. Oh, nice little chin drop by Hasbrook. He's got Albrecht on his back. Now Albrecht going to come back through. And so we got a reversal. Now we've got another reversal. Okay, so we're just gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna do any reversal. Okay, so we had we had a takedown and near fall, and then they were facing each other. So there's not gonna be any type of uh, reversal, I believe. So we're gonna stand at 7-0. There we go. That's a good job by the official, making sure the score is correct. Um, Hasbrook will be on top. Albrecht will be down. And what happened was he uh, did have an instantaneous where he lost control, but he was still facing him, so there was no control. A nice job by the official to clarify that. Minute 29 to go, third period. Hasbrook now leads at 7-0. And had a nice little, uh, call it a pancake there in that period, right to his back off the takedown. Now Hasbrook gonna try to hook up on that near arm. He's got a two-on-one looking for a chicken wing. Minute eight to go, third period. Nice match put in by Hasbrook. Now he's trying to set up that, uh, look at that cradle. Riley, a lanky 113 pounder. So a lot of leverage that he can use to his advantage. And right now, Albrecht having a tough time getting up off of his stomach into his base. Riley controlling both sides, 46 seconds to go. So Riley Hasbrook well on his way to a third place finish. Back over on the other mat, we got Shalesky just came out. He's taking on Gage Anderson from Lemon McIntosh. So Hasbrook looks like he's in well in control. 25 seconds to go over there. 7-0. Illegal move on Hasbrook. Full Nelson. So he'll pick up one, Will Albrecht. Back over to Shalesky. Still no score with him and Gage Anderson from Lemon and McIntosh. Both are in the neutral position, jockeying for position. Okay, back over to Hasbrook, still up 7-1, 20 seconds to go. Now Anderson gonna shoot in on a single leg on Cholesky, right near the edge of the mat. Cholesky trying to throw in a wizard. And Gage Anderson trying to come out the back door, but Cholesky with that length, just able to reach the arm, and off the mat we go. Back over to Riley. He leads it seven to one, five seconds to go in the match. So a great match put in by both Liam Elbrick and Hasbrook. Hasbrook's gonna win it, seven one. So he'll be your third place winner. Seven one, Hasbrook over Albrecht from Kildare. Back over to Shalesky now at 120. Second period action, we're gonna be neutral. Still no score, Shalesky and Gage Anderson from Lemon McIntosh. Shalesky tries to get that single. Anderson just kind of drops him right down to his hip, picks up two on the takedown. So Shalesky's gonna trail this one now 2-0. So Hasbrook will take home third, again with a seven to one win over Elbrick. And then we'll be waiting after this match for Jaron Frank. He'll come out at 145 pounds. And again, it'll go a little bit quicker because we're using both mats. So Jaron Frank will be up. He'll be taking on Curry Brown from Miles City. And then we'll have a little bit of a break as Bowden Hasbrook then will take on Jules from Sturgis. And once again, Devin Greff will take home third. He'll win by medical forfeit over Noel from Bowman County Beach. So here we go. Back to Shalesky. He trails at 2-0. He's on the bottom. Gage Anderson on top trying to throw in a chicken wing. Shalesky trying to do a little bit of a roll there. Very lanky wrestler is Shalesky. Very tough. Tough to handle those, those long arms and legs that Anderson right now doing a nice job with that chicken wing and controlling the hips. 
50 seconds to go. Anderson still leads it 2 to 0. Still using that chicken wing. Looks like uh, Kyler trying to do some kind of Peterson there. Now Gage again going to try to throw in that half Nelson. 30 seconds to go, second period. Anderson still in control, 2-0. to zero. Oh, he's got a chicken wing hooked up, and he's just trying to do a little tilt. So Shalesky needs to fight that off, as Anderson does have it hooked up, but again, the long legs of Shalesky uh, able to block that move, but Anderson still has that chicken wing hooked up. Uh, let's see now if he goes to a little bit of a chin drop. Yes, he does. A little chin drop, and Shalesky looks like he's going to fight that one off, too. So that's the way the second period's going to end. Shalesky trails at 2 0. We're back in third. Back to the Hedinger Classic as Kyler Shalesky trails two to zero to Gage Anderson from Lemon McIntosh. We're in the neutral position and right away Shalesky dropping down looking for a fireman. Now Anderson going to try to hook up on a front headlock. And again the length of Shalesky is going to drive people crazy. Those long arms and legs. Oh now Anderson in on a nice little swing by and he's going to bring him down. He's going to pick up two. Just kind of shucked him by, hooked on the leg, brought him down to the mat. He's going to pick up two. So now Anderson's going to lead this one four to zero, minute eight to go, third period. So Kyler Shalesky has his work cut out for him. And Gage Anderson doing a nice job of controlling the arms and the hips. So we're under one minute to go. We're at 120 pounds semifinals. And Gage Anderson leading Kyle. Oh, Kyler looking to hit the Peterson. Now he's going to come out the back door, pick up two on the reversal. So that bridges the gap. It's four to two. 38 seconds to go. Shalesky picks up two on the reversal. And now Anderson looks like he's going to try to do a little bit of a stand up. And we'll see what Shalesky does. If he lets him go, he's got to cut him here pretty soon. All right, so there's one. And now let's see what Shalesky's going to try. He's going to have to try a throw or something because he's down by three. So Kyler, he's got to set it up, 15 seconds to go. He trails at five to two. And Anderson knows that well. Here goes Cholesky in on a single. Anderson, cross face, controlling the upper body. And that's the way it's going to end. So Cholesky's going to go down. He'll take fourth. Gage Anderson will pick up third as he wins it, five two. So five to two, Anderson wins it. So Cholesky will take home fourth place. And Anderson from Lemon McIntosh will be your third place finisher this year at the Classic. All right, so there we go. We got uh, Hasbrook comes through with the win, seven to one. He takes home third. Uh, Shalesky gets defeated by Gage Anderson from Lemon McIntosh, five to two. So he'll take home fourth place this year at the Classic. All right, so we're at 132 on one mat, 126. Next Frank, next action will be Frank. He comes in at a big old 145. So we've got a couple of matches here. Let's listen to some more sponsors, and we'll come back and update you um, on some of the uh, Bowman County uh, Lemon McIntosh wrestlers as we start to see them uh, come through as well. You're listening to the Hedinger Classic on KNDC 1490 in Hedinger, North Dakota. We'll be back.
they score a seven and one and lead Aldrich from Kildare. At 120 pounds, Kyler Shalesky was defeated by Gage Anderson from Lemon McIntosh by a score of five to two. So we're currently wait, waiting on Jaron Frank. And again, uh, Sarsland now gives up two more points to Wickstrom. Wickstrom out of Harding County. 6-1, looks like there we go, 30 seconds to go in that match. Jeff, Jaron Frank will be taking on Curry Brown out of Miles City for third and fourth. Devin Greff was victorious already over Noel from Beach, uh, Bowman County Beach by medical forfeit. So Greff will take home third place at 152 pounds. So a nice tournament put in by Devin Greff. Again, we'll have Picas in the championship. Uh, we'll have Anderson in the championship. And then a couple of uh, matches down here, we'll have Bowden Hasbrook. He'll be taking on Jules from Sturgis. Uh, very tough, 220 pounder. So another tough, tough match for Bowden. Doesn't get any, any easier. Our last match, uh, he had to take on the, uh, uh, the boy from uh, Harding County, uh, Gray Gilbert. So. Tough, tough way to come back, but hey, we know Bowden will be in there. A uh, tough match for him coming up, but uh, we'll see what happens. So here we go. Jaron Frank taking on Curry Brown out of Miles City. This is the third and fourth place match for 145 pound weight class. Frank gonna shoot in on a double leg. He was defeated last round by Dennis out of Watford City. Very good wrestler for Watford City at 145 pounds. Frank right now coming in, figure four of the body or the head. Many years ago, of course, that was illegal. You could uh, scissors the body, but not figure four. You could figure four the head. So uh, things have changed. So we're still kind of in that position where we might see a stalemate. Now Frank gonna try to come out the back door. We'll see if we we'll see a stalemate here pretty soon. They're letting, them, they're letting them try to get through it, but there we go, there's the stalemate. And again, stalemate when uh, there's no advantage or progression either way, they're gonna stop it and restart. So again, Brown didn't have any advantage, nor did Frank, so we restart. A minute one to go, first period. Still no score. Frank gonna shoot in on a double leg right near the edge of the mat, and off we go, still no score. We're gonna restart center circle. Well, a nice shots by Frank. He's got to continue that. He does that nice single into a double leg. Percentages show us whoever gets that first takedown does usually go on to win the match. So, a very good predictor of who's going to uh, definitely have the advantage. And both guys right now taking some fairly good shots. Now Brown going to come in and hook up on the on the head. Drops down. No doing. 24 seconds to go. First period. Now Frank looks for a heel pick, nothing there. Oh, we got a, unfortunately an injury over on the other mat at 138 pounds. So we'll have a stoppage over there. Six seconds to go, first period. Looks like we're gonna end it 0-0 going into the second. So we'll be back in 30 with Jaron Frank. Curry Brown is going to be down. He's going to hit a quick escape, but he's going to pick up one. Now he's going to shoot in on the leg. Frank's going to have to scramble here. He can't give up a takedown. He needs to get that. He needs to get that leg back right now. Brown in on that single leg. We're hoping for a stalemate. Now Brown's going to come around. He's going to pick up two on the takedown. So a nice shot by Brown. He picks up one on the escape. Comes back through. Picks up two on the takedown. So he's going to lead it now, three to zero. Looks like he's going to throw in a little bit of a cross face. 
Frank looking for a little bit of a roll. He's trying to set up that Peterson roll. He's going to try to come through. He's got the leg hooked up, but he doesn't have the arm. Now Brown going to push the head down, and that's the good uh, defense to that. You throw the head down. Now, now Frank going to come through. He's got the leg. Let's see if he picks up one or two. So Jaron's got to work up. He can't have a stalemate from here. There we go. He's got to lift that leg up. He does not want a stalemate. Because right now, Brown, yep, Brown's still in control. We're going to get one. And then we've got a technical violation on Brown. We're going to ask what he did. Okay. So some kind of technical violation on Brown. He still leads it 3-2. to two. So he's going to give up a point to Frank, and then we go neutral. Well, he gave the points to Brown. So we'll see about that. Brown going to shoot in on a single leg. Frank needs to get heavy on the on the arm as Brown's going to pick up a takedown, and he's going to go right into a cradle. So Jaron needs to clear that because right now Brown doing a good job. Oh, there's there's the takedown. Okay. So he didn't hook up on the cradle, so he leads it now five to two, does Curry Brown. And that's the way the second period is gonna end. Five to two. Okay, over on the other mat, we got 138 pounds. Right near the edge of the mat. Moorcroft and Sturgis. Okay, so here we go, third period. Frank's gonna be down, he trails at five two. He's gonna hit a quick escape. Now that moves the score to five to three. So Jaron Frank gonna shoot in on a single leg. Brown gonna scroll back. Now they both shoot. Brown comes underneath. Uh oh. Uh oh. Out goes Frank. All right. So we're gonna take a timeout here as uh, they bumped heads and Frank went down. And uh, yeah, let's take a, let's take a timeout here. We'll be back and check on Jaron Frank.
right when he shot Curry Brown shot uh, nice little uh, bump of the heads and you could tell Frank was dazed uh, so he will medically forfeit uh, or default however you want to call it he will uh, default this match to Curry Brown so Curry Brown will take home third Again, discretion's a better part of Val there. He was down seven to two, uh, no sense uh, continuing on. Uh, so he will take home fourth place. Brown will take home third place. Devin Greff again will win third by medical forfeit over Noel from uh, Bowman County Beach. And what we'll be doing then is we'll be waiting uh, up until we get to 220. We'll be waiting for Bowden Hasbrook as he'll be taking on Jules from Sturgis. Uh, the last match of this third and fourth place round. Uh, and then what they're going to do is uh, they'll uh, set up for the uh, championship. They're going to leave both mats out. They'll have the girls division on one side where we should have Jennifer Verdon and I believe Akalia Olsen uh, in that as well. And then on the other mat, they will have the championship matches where we have Tristan Pekas and Nicholas Anderson both going for championships at 182 and 195 respectively. So again, stay tuned to KNDC. Oh, take that back. Out comes Bowden Hasbrook. All right, so here we go. So Hasbrook's gonna come out. They jumped all the way from 145 to 220. So uh, there we go. This will be the last match that we have for third and fourth, and then we'll be ready for the championship matches. So this will be our last match of this round. Hasbrook and Jules. Right away, they're both going to try to hook up on the head. Jules going to drop head down. Going to try a little uh, swing by as Jules. It was a great match earlier with him and Stuber from Bowman County Beach. It was Jules. I think ended up four to three. And again, uh, Hasbrook had to take on uh, the boy Gilbert from Harding County. One zero. So good match there as well. Right near the edge of the mat, off we go. Still no score. Hasbrook and Jules. Oh, nice little snap down by Jules, but Hasbrook gonna grab onto the leg. And now Jules just a little bit too big there. He picks up two on the takedown. So Jules will lead this one two to zero. Bowden always tries to clear those hands. Looks for a little bit of a roll or a switch. Now Jules gonna throw in that half Nelson. He's gonna try to run it. The credit Bowden popping that hand off. And now Jules again gonna try to bring that arm back. 48 seconds to go. First period. Jules still in control over Hasbrook. We're at 220 pound third place match. And Jules controlling the hips. Let's see if he tries a half Nelson from the other side. 25 seconds to go first period. Now he's going to bring the arm back. And he's just going to power Bowden right over. Yeah, that's a nice move. They just call it thread the needle. You pull the arm back, force him right over, and uh, Bowden still got 10 seconds. Let's see if he can fight through this. As Jules getting chest on chest, Hasbrook. And there's the pin. So Jules picks up a pin in 157 over Hasbrook here at 220. So Jules will take home third place. And Bowden Hasbrook will pick up fourth place this year at the Classic. So that was in one minute and 57 seconds. So three seconds to go. Okay. So that's the way it's going to end the third and fourth place round. <laughs> Again, Riley Hasbrook, victorious 7-1. He'll take home third place. He, he defeated Liam Albrecht from Kildare. Cholesky was defeated by Gage Anderson from Lemon McIntosh. By a score of 5-2, he'll take home fourth place. Jaron Anderson, again, medical default as uh, him and Curry Brown, unfortunately, bumped heads. And uh, uh, Curry Brown got the better part of that. Jaron is going to default out of the tournament, so he'll place fourth. Devin Greff was victorious by medical default as he'll take home third over Noel from Bowman County Beach. 
Then we dropped all the way up to Hasbrook, the match you just heard, and he was pinned with three seconds to go in the first period by Jules from Sturgis. So that's the way this round's gonna end. We're gonna take a, a break, probably a little bit of a break. Then they're gonna do the girls on one mat, boys on the other. We'll find out uh, for sure. Jennifer Vernon and I believe a Kaylee Olson. I don't have those in front of me. We'll check that out for you. And then we also are looking at Tristan Picas at 182. He'll take on Reese Jacobs from Sturgis. And Mr. Nick Anderson in the championship at 195. He'll take on Jay Gibson out of Miles City, Montana. So, there it is, third and fourth in the books. Now we're up to the championship. Stay tuned to KNDC 1490 for more action here at the Henninger Classic. We'll be back in just a little bit with championship matches on KNDC. finishing his shots. Huh?
15 minutes, the concession stand will close. In 15 minutes, the concession will close.
least value the most. So, winner of a $50 cash prize from Graphic Attic, Megan Williams. Come on up. 100%. Winner of a $50 cash prize from Graphic Attic, Ron Rose. Winner of a $50 cash prize from uh, BJ's Auto Body, Patty Ness. Winner of a $50 prize from BJ's Auto Body, Angelo McCann. Winner of a $50 prize from BJ's Auto Body, Via Vanderpool. Winner of a fifty dollar prize from DJ Auto Body, Matthew Berdin. Somebody check that kid's ID, please. Winner of a seventy five dollar uh, Auto Body kit, Harvey Oates. Winner of a power tool. Topside LED flashlight with attached battery valued at $150. Lisa Moore. And our grand prize, a $500 uh, card from Amazon. Hugo Verdin. Thank you to all who bought tickets. We're going to go home with our finals here very shortly.
appreciate everybody's patience. One more thing before we get going with, the, with our face-offs. We do want to take a moment to thank our reps. They put in a long day yesterday and they're putting in a long day today. So, in no particular order, Brock Stapler, John Latham, Chase Tyson, Wade Blankenbaker, Greg, Karen, and Tanner Schillinger. Let's give them a big round of applause, please. All right, once again, as an after in the tournament, we're going to be starting with the boys varsity on that one and the girls varsity on that two. So let's get ready to go. At 106 pounds in the boys varsity division, sponsored by JC Farms, we have Dave Humes from Moorcroft. And Jack Bombach from Kildeer. At 100 pounds in the girls' varsity division, representing Hedinger's Grant, we have Jennifer Verdin. And from Beach, Micaiah McFarland. At 113 pounds in the boys' varsity division, Sponsored by Little Hawks Daycare, we have Taryn Zabrowski from Sturgis and Jake Phelan from Miles City. At 105 pounds in the Girls Varsity Division, sponsored by Little Hawks Daycare, we have Yulila Maynard from Cheyenne Eagle Butte and from Kildare, Tammy Coots. At 120 pounds in the boys' varsity division, sponsored by Graphic Attic, from Sturgis, we have Keegan Zabrowski. And from Spearfish, John Jeffrey. At 110 pounds in the girls' varsity division, sponsored by Next Door Pizza and Graphic Attic, we have from Hedinger, Akalia Olsen. At 126, sponsored by Grand River Honey and Eric and Dana Andrus. From Spearfish, we have Parker Graveman. And from Sturgis, D. Daniel. At 115 pounds in the girls' varsity division, sponsored by Kennedy's Fresh Foods, we have from Warcroft, Rebecca Anderson. And from Custer County, Robin Lighthold. At 132 pounds in the boys' varsity division. <clears throat> My voice is going to make it through this, I swear. Sponsored by Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union. From Sturgis, Bo Peters. And from Baker, Riley Davis. At 120 pounds in the girls' varsity division, sponsored by Lodge Bull Store and Garrett and Christy Schmitz. From Lemon, Quinn Butler. And from Custer County, Grail Fox. At 138, sponsored by Western Frontier Insurance. From Sturgis, Thane Elsher. And out of Kildare, Gus Bomba. At 125 pounds in the girls' varsity division, sponsored by Melanie and Rosalind Law, from Sturgis, Brooklyn Brandt. And she'll be facing from Baker, J.C. Gorder. DJ Paint and Auto Body from Spearfish, Aiden Crop. And from Watford City, Ethan Dennis. 
at 130 pounds in the girls' varsity division. Sponsored by Mugrood Oil Services. From Sturgis, Madison Snyder. And from Baker, Taisha Deets. At 152 pounds, sponsored by Lightning Creek Services, from Moorcroft, Chris Boardman. And representing Kildare, Tucker Bomba. At 135 pounds in the girls' varsity division, sponsored by Ryan and Nicole Sott. Out of Baker, Jessica Stark. And out of Custer County, Story Palowski. At 160 pounds in the boys' varsity division, sponsored by Tyler Erickson. Out of Dawson County, Espen Hostetler. Also out of Dawson County, Jaden Seha. At 140 pounds in the girls' varsity division, sponsored by Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union, out of Custer County, Ariana Ellison. And out of Baker, Ryan Gorder. At 170 pounds, sponsored by T2 Honey and Aaron and Alan Tim. Out of Sturgis, Kelson Girk. Also out of Sturgis, Preston Ray. At 145 pounds, sponsored by JC Farms. Out of Cheyenne Eagle Butte, Fallon Peterson. And out of Dawson County, Sophia Schott. And the boys varsity division at 182 pounds, sponsored by Next Door Pizza. Out of, we have Reese Jacobs. From Sturgis. And from Henninger Scranton, Tristan Peekin. At 155 pounds in the girls' varsity division, sponsored by Children's Wave Daycare, out of Baker, Kelly Newland. Also out of Baker, Jada Harbaugh. At 195 pounds in our boys' varsity division, sponsored by Evanson Jensen Funeral Home, out of Miles City, Jaden Gibson. And representing his hometown Nighthawks, Nick Anderson. At 170 pounds, the girls' varsity division out of Custer County, Madeline Julke. And also out of Custer County, Abby Dibble. At 220 pounds, sponsored by Pro Point Cooperative, out of Harding County, Gray Gilbert. And out of Bowman County Beach, Nace Stuber. And finally, at 285, sponsored by Top Coat Auto Body, at Boys Varsity Division, out of Moorcroft, Oliver Gorsuch. And out of Watford City, Niven Hayes. That'll do it for our championship matches, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck to all the competitors. Be safe, and let's go wrestle.
Welcome to the Hedinger Classic. Again, we're having technical difficulties on KNDC, so we're just going to do this on stream team. Jennifer Verdon going to be taking on Michaela McFarland from Beach. Verdon going to shoot in. She's going to pick up two on the takedown. We will again be doing the simultaneous, the boys on mat one, girls on mat two. So Verdon picked up two, gives up one on the escape. McFarland going to shoot in. Verdin going to pick up two again. And she's going to let her go. It's going to move the score now to four to two. Oh, on the other mat, we got a splatal. So uh, Humes from Moorcroft picks up a pin as he has a splatal on the uh, boy from Kildare. So that's your champion at 100. And six pounds. And then Verdon gonna turn over McFarland. She's gonna pick up a pin as well. So Jennifer Verdon is your champion at the Hedinger Classic at 100 to 105 pounds. Jennifer Verdon. Okay, so that'll bring up Akalia Olson. Nope. Back that up. We'll see who's up here next. Okay, so over on mat one, that was Dane Hughes picking up the pin over Jack Bombach. So Jack Bombach picks up second. Humes picked up first champion. He's uh, he had a nice little splatal there. He picked up the championship at 106 pounds. And again, Jennifer Verdon over on the girls' side, she's also going to pick up the championship. So it looks like we're going to have a, a skip and change here. We're going to have somebody from Eagle Butte and Kildare, but Akaley Olson will be coming up. We'll see when she's going to be uh, called up. So they're going to they're going to have somebody else before Akalia. So we will do Akalia's match when she's ready to roll. Again, we'll keep trying KNDC as we're having some technical difficulties. And uh, we'll just uh, leave the mic open so you can hear the, uh, the crowd. Watch it on uh, mats one and two on the stream team. And uh, we'll be back with Akali Olson in short short period of time.
Once again, 100 pound girls and 106 boys, please report to the entrance wave. Currently on mat one, we have Zablowski from Sturgis Brown High School and Philbin from Miles City. Right now, Fazilski is leading it by a score of eight to one, 42 seconds to go in the third period. Coming up next, Akeli Olson will be taking the mat for the Nighthawks. So Taryn Zabrowski is your champion at 113 pounds from Sturgis Brown High School as he wins 8-1, 8-1 right. over Jay All Phelan right. from Miles City. In the 100 pound division, in the girls varsity division, in second place, yeah, go out to the center of the floor, in second place, Makaya McFarland, Beach, and in first place, Jennifer Verdin, heading her strand. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll, pay, if you'll uh, turn your attention to the head table, the girls are receiving this uh, custom-made trophy made by our own Cody Tomac. It's a uh, a metal rose that he sculpted with his awesome welding skills. So let's give another round of applause to Cody Tomac, please. All right, in the boys' 106-pound division, in eighth place, Jace Thurman, Sturgis Brown. In seventh place, Shay Smith, Hardin County. In sixth place, Tyler Baldwin, Sturgis. In fifth place, Parker Weddle, Standing Rock. In fourth place, Jason Thurman, Sturgis. In third place, Caleb Smith, Miles City. In second place, Jack Bombeck, Kildare. And your champion at 106 pounds from Norcross. as we did have uh, one Please report. One weight class already completed as Jennifer Verdin wins by fall over Micaiah McFarland from Beach Bowman County. So Jennifer Verdin is your champion at a girls uh, varsity 100 to 105 pounds. And that's going to bring up Kaylee Olson. Kaylee Olson will be taking on a Dally Simmons from Kildare. Once again, a Kaylee Olson. Alia Simmons taking on uh, uh, going for the championship here. 
in the girls varsity division, 110 and over. So here we go, Olson and Simmons. Again, coming up later on, we're gonna have Tristan Picas, and uh, he'll be taking on the uh, very tough Reese Jacobs from Sturgis, and Nick Anderson's gonna be taking on Gibson from Miles City. And Kaylee Olson gonna throw in a headlock, and she's gonna have Simmons towards her back. Now Simmons gonna come through, and she's got a Kaylee in trouble. So let's see here, right near the edge of the mat, we're gonna give up two to Simmons. So Adalia Simmons gets two takedown on Olsen. So Olsen will be down. Right off the whistle. Kalia gonna try a little sit out. Gonna reach back, grab the head. Now she's gonna come back through. No change of position. Simmons from Kildare. Ooh, nice cross for Simmons. Kalia gonna get turned over towards her back and Simmons has Olsen in trouble. She's gonna pick up at least two. So Kalia gives up two on the near fall. That's gonna move the score now to four to zero in favor of Simmons. So Kalia needs to clear the hands. Simmons has that leg hooked up. 45 seconds to go. Olsen trails it 4-0. Simmons still in control. Now she's going to come across again with that cross face. She's going to reach through, try to get that inside leg. And she's going to try to force Sakalia towards her back one more time. And right now we're down to 25 seconds over on the other mat. 120 pound championship match. Uh, boy from Sturgis leads it 2-1. Kalia trails it four to zero, 13 seconds to go, first period. Simmons been able to control to this point. Kalia needs to clear the hands, try to work her way up off of her base. And that's the way the first period's gonna end. As Simmons leads it four to zero over Kalia Olsen. On the toss, it's gonna be Olsen's choice. She wants up. So Kalia trails it by four. She's gonna put Simmons in the down position. We'll see what uh, is gonna transpire here as Simmons was able to roll through on the headlock by Olsen and uh, then able to pretty much control that first period in the top position. Now she's gonna, looks like she's gonna try a little roll. Kalia's gotta get that leg back, there we go. Now Akalia trying to come over the top. And Simmons gonna try to stand up and face her. Olsen gonna force her back down. Now if she steps through, she's got that shoulder on the ground. So Akalia, there she goes. She's got a front headlock and now if she walks around the head. If she walks around the head, she'll have Simmons in trouble. But Simmons doing a good job of hanging on to that leg. Minute 23 to go. Olsen still trails it four to zero. She needs to keep walking that head. All right, so we're gonna restart. Akali is gonna restart. She's gonna come back. Let's see if she tries that front headlock one more time. And Simmons is kind of controlling the hands right now. And she leads it 4-0. 58 seconds to go, second period. Olsen trails 4-0. Official telling Simmons, you gotta get going on the bottom. Now Kalia looks like she's gonna try to throw in a headlock on this uh, There we go. Looks like she's gonna throw in a half Nelson from both sides. There we go. Now she's gonna go underneath both of the wrists. Now she's got that half Nelson hooked up on the opposite side and she can run the head. 28 seconds to go. It will be Simmons' choice third period. Kalia needs to score here. She needs to get some kind of points before going down four in that last period. She's got that half hooked up again. She needs to run it. Oh, now she's got the half from this side. Ten seconds to go. Simmons not doing much on the bottom. So we'll see what she decides to do third period. And we'll be back in 30 with uh, Kalia Olsen.
Simmons chooses down. Olsen right off the whistle, putting a lot of pressure on that head. Oh, we got an illegal move. Full Nelson. Gildeer coach uh, John Elkins saying, uh, Miss Simmons, you got to get going. So Kaylee going to give up a point for an illegal move as she went a full Nelson. So now it moves it to five to zero. And Kaylee again going to throw in that half. And she's trying to force it over. There she's got that half. She's got that angle. If she keeps going, she's going to have her in trouble. Kaylee Olsen just about turns her. She's got to try that again. Because right now Simmons is doing absolutely nothing from the bottom. And Akalia putting the pressure on. She's got to keep that half. Unfortunately, she goes out of bounds. And she needs to hustle back and do that same thing. Do that half Nelson with that one-on-one -on -one and run it. And Coach Elkins is telling Miss Simmons, hey, you've got to get going. 5-0, minute 16 to go, third period. Olsen down, but right now she is the aggressor. Let's see if it goes, oh, caution, there's got to have that, uh, I have that thumb behind. See if she tries that half Nelson one on one again. She's been the aggressor. So right off the bat, there it is. She's got the one on one. Throw in the half and she's got to run it. Oh, oh, and then we got the full Nelson again. So what happens is you bring both hands underneath and you touch. That's an illegal move. So again, Akali is going to give up one. That's all right. So 6-0 is your score. She's definitely the aggressor right now. All right. So we have a champion at 120. On the other mat, away from Sturgis. So Broski wins at 120. All right. Kaylee is going to say, hey, I want to let her up. All right. So we're going to go both up. And that's a good call because Kaylee is going to need a throw here. So Probably more than likely, she's going to say, hey, I want to try that headlock. We'll see. So she's going to let Simmons up. So now we're neutral, 7-0. Let's see what Akalia does. She's going to try to set up that headlock. Now she's going to go down to a single. Olsen in on a double right near the edge of the mat. Off we go. No change, 51 seconds to go. Olsen trails at 7-0 to Adali Simmons from Kildare. And pretty soon you're going to see Akalia maybe toss that headlock in there somewhere. I think Simmons knows that as well. Okay, so she's setting it up. 43 seconds to go. She's coming in, she's coming in, and she's got to wait for Simmons to take one step towards her. Pretty soon we're going to see a stall call. There it is. Now she's getting closer. She's got 30 seconds to go. Simmons going to get a stall call here pretty soon. She's backing up. Oh, there we go. Off the mat. 22 seconds to go. 22 seconds to go. Again, Akalia needs to toss it. 22 seconds. Simmons knows what's coming, so she's just got to go in. And she's just got to give her a shot. 15 seconds to go. Olsen trails 7-0 to Simmons from Kilder. There it is. All right, she, she caught her. Now Simmons is going to come through. Just a little bit too much experience for Olsen to handle there. Simmons wins 9-0. Good match here at 110 pounds between Olsen and Simmons from Kilder. Simmons, your champion. Olsen will take home second place for the night. All right. All right, so there you go. Olsen and Simmons, great match at 110. We're up to 126 pounds on the guys. And then over on the girls' match, uh, I'm not sure exactly what it says here. Uh, after 110, they go up to the girls of 115. So we're at right now. We'll be back in a little bit with more action. If you have a chance, go on the stream team as well. Uh, we will have those matches. Uh, We'll be able to see them on mat one and two. We will not do the play-by-play -play for those, but you'll be able to hear it through the microphone uh, and looking at the response. So our next match up here will be Pekas. Tristan's got a tough one. He's taking on Reese Jacobs from Sturgis.
And then right after that, we'll have Nick Anderson, 185, taking on Jay Gibson. Sponsored by Little House Cake here. You're listening to the classic Candy Adam Tonight. We thank all the great sponsors for making this happen. We'll be back with you. Seventh place, Max Anderson, Lemon. Sixth place, Cordell Brewa, Hardin County. Fifth place, Cooper McCaven, Faith. Fourth place, Liam Albrecht, Kildare. Third place, Riley Asbrook, Hedinger Strand. Second place, Jake Phelan, Miles City. And your champion at 113 pounds from Sturgis, Taryn Zabrowski. 120 pound place winners and 110 pound place winners, please report.
pounds in the boys' varsity division. Or 110 pounds in the girls' varsity division. Please clear out of the entryway. Thank you. Fans can't see. Champion at 126 is D. Daniels from Sturgis Brown High School over Graveman from Spearfish. D. Daniels, your champion at 126. In third place from Lemon, Darla Barnes. In second place from
in fourth place from Harding County, Cannon Patton. In third place from Sturgis, Brooklyn Bear. In second place from Moorcroft, Rebecca Anderson.
Custer County. And in fourth place, Micaiah Hartley Beach. Third place, Carissa Frank Baker. In second place, Grail Fox, Custer County. And your 120 pound champion in the girls division, from 11, Quinn Butler. Just a reminder, 125 pound place winners for the girls. And 138 for the boys. We need to uh, gather at the edge of the mat in the middle.
second place, Rob Sturgis, Brooklyn, Brandt. And your champion from Baker at 125 pounds, sponsored by Melly and Rose Lemoyne, JC Gorder. Frontier Insurance. In eighth place, from Hardy County, Cash Hansen. In seventh place, from Cheyenne Eagle Butte, Trip Shrimp. In sixth place, from Watford City, Brian Arnegard. In fifth place, from Bowman County Beach, Sawyer Noel. In fourth place, from Moorcroft, Trenton Gray. In third place, from Sturgis, Kay Wilner. In second place, from Sturgis, Thane Elsher. And your champion at 138 pounds,
Josie Searwolf. In second place, from Baker, Taisha Dietz. And your champion at 130 pounds, from Sturgis, Madison Snyder. At 145 pounds in the boys' varsity division, sponsored by BJ Paint and Auto. In eighth place from Moorcroft, Richie Ellison. In seventh place from Dawson County, Keenan Huber. In sixth place from Bowman County, Colby Sperry. In fifth place from Sturgis, Dawson Imhofer. In fourth place from Hedinger Stranton, Jared Frank. In third place from Miles City, Curry Brown. In second place from Spearfish, Aiden, Aiden Croft. And your champion at 145 pounds out of Watford City, Ethan Dennis.
from Custer County, Story Pulowski. And your champion at 135 pounds from Baker, Jessica Stark. In the boys division, 152 pounds, sponsored by Lightning Creek Services. He's fine. In eighth place, Riley DeHaven, Moorcroft. In seventh place, Regan Schaefer, Broadus. In sixth place, Zane Wagner, Watford City. In fifth place, Deegan Vett, Miles City. In fourth place, Emory Knoll, Bowman County. In third place, from Hattinger Stratton, Devin Graff. In second place, from Kildare, Tucker Bamba. And your champion from Moorcroft, Chris Boardman. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back here to the Robert Rinke Auditorium. Still uh, wrestling here at 7.17 at night. Had some problems with track wrestling earlier, and uh, just been uh, basically uh, slow wrestling throughout the day. We're into the finals. Sturgis Brown is going to win the team title right now, sitting at 344 points. Moorcroft, 226. Mile City, 221. Kilder in fourth at 175 and a half. Spearfish in at fifth at 161. Hedinger Scranton sitting in sixth at 157. Bowman Beach, eighth at 121. Lemon sitting in 12th at 45 points. So that is your team scores. Let's run down some team results here. First off for Bowman Beach. 
Cutter Rodnick finishes fourth. Isaiah Dobbs finishes, uh, did not uh, place. Uh, Caleb Sarsland took home fourth. Caden Northrup did not place. Sawyer Knoll took fifth. Colby Sperry took sixth. Emery Knoll ended up injury defaulting out, taking fourth. Carter Sarsland finishing eighth. Blake Wolbaum did not place, and neither did Mace, uh, Mace Stuber finished second. Actually, no, there he's in the championship. Uh, Mace Stuber will be in the championship at 220. So that is the Bowman Beach results for Lemon. Max Anderson finishes seventh. Gage Anderson finishes third. Cass Sheely finishes seventh. Emmett Mahar finishes sixth. And Connor Tavet finishes eighth. And Liam McCartney finishes eighth as well. For the Nighthawks, Riley Hasbrook took home third. Kyler Shaleski, fourth. Jaron Frank also took home fourth place. Tanner Blackwell did not place. Devin Greff, third. Bowden Hasbrook, fourth. And the two championship matches coming up, Tristan Pikas and Nick Anderson. Those are your remaining finalists for the uh, Nighthawks. That match will be coming up here uh, here in a little bit. We're at 170 pounds for the uh, championships. Reminder the coaches, please get your stake and bird award. We will get you the girls. Uh, Jennifer Verdon finishes second, or champion, excuse me. Uh, Michaelia Olson finished in second place in her division. Uh, as far as the other schools go, we'll update you on the girls. Team scores, Lemon finishes third, 35. Custer County second, Baker first. Heading to Scranton took home sixth. Beach took home eighth place with 14 points. As far as the team results went, we will start off with Beach. Beach came down with Micaiah McFarland finishing fourth. Micaiah Hartley finishes fourth. For Lemon, Darla Barnes finishes third. Quinn Butler first. Dina Byers finishes third. And as we did say for the Night Ox, Jennifer Verdon, champion, Akali Olson, second place. So that is your results. Once again, waiting on just two matches. Tristan Pekus and Reese Jacobs. And then Nick Anderson, he will take on Jaden Gibson of Miles City, and that will wrap up our tournament coverage here on KNDC. Team stream will go until the final match at heavyweight. Gonna pause here from our sponsors. We're about a minute away from Tristan Pekus coming out, so stick close to KNDC on a Saturday evening.
Yes. Do want to uh, let you know the girls went over to Scranton. Uh, they hosted Trenton. And that has been uh, the fourth time we've played each other. And the Nighthawk JB lost, and the Varsity won, 57 to 24. So a nice win for the Nighthawks, picking up a win there. Next action for the uh, Nighthawk for the girls. They'll be traveling to Kilder on Monday night for A and B squad starting at 5:30. And then on Tuesday, the boys will be heading to Beulah to take on the Beulah Miners. That'll be A and B starting at 4.30. I believe there might be C squad, not positive. But here we go. Reese Jacobs of Sturgis, Tristan Picus of the Nighthawks squaring off here at the championship at 200, or excuse me, at 182 pounds. Both kids just gonna tie up. Two minute, two minute, two minute periods. By the way, Jacob's going to reach for the head, going to take a shot. Picus is going to kind of circle around, can't get nothing. So Jacob just backs back out of that one. And we'll retie up here near the edge of the mat. Picus in this black and yellow singlet. Oh, nice shot by Jacobs. He's going to take Picus down for the first two points here in the championship. Wolf will roll out of bounds. We'll send it back to center circle. Whistle blows and right away, Pika's stroke. Oh, Pika's gotta be careful, almost got uh, pinned as he went to his back. Goes back for a stand up, trying to peel that hand, but uh, Reese Jacobs very strong. Down to 54 seconds, 2 0. In favor of Reese Jacobs of Sturgis Brown who will win the team title here tonight. Has the left wrist of Picus, but Picus gonna bring that arm back. Gonna avoid the, uh, the move by Jacobs. Not a lot of movement underneath here, 2-0. Now Picus gonna try a short sit. And right away, Jacobs gonna grab that wrist, trying to get off to the side. Official in the way here, trying to over on stream team here. Good view there on stream team on mat number one. Over on mat two, we have the girls championship matches going. And time will run out, 0-0 our score. As Picus and Jacobs. Looks like Picus will defer, Jacobs will go down. 2-0 the score, Jacobs. Right away, Pika's gonna get up to the top here. Gonna get a little high, he's gotta be careful. Jacobs gonna try to come out the back door here and Pika's just gonna try to hold on for dear life. As Jacobs trying to free up the arm and very dangerous as uh, Pika's has that foot and calf right up to his face. And we close to a stalemate here, we'll see. As Peek is holding on, and now stalemate's gonna be called. Oh, technical violation, clasping on Pekas. So now it's 3-0 in favor of Jacobs. Down to a minute 18. Still have Nick Anderson left to go, and then we will be done for the weekend from all of our sports. Picus will get the escape, or excuse me, he'll uh, let Jacobs up 4-0 now. Jacobs with the lead. And right away, you're gonna do a nice little shuck by and pick up the two on Picus. So now 6-0 here in the championship match of 182 pounds.
Hard cross face by Jacobs, working off to the side. Jacobs trying to, Jacobs is staying busy here. Hooks up that left leg. And once again, Pikas unable to get away from Jacobs. Jacobs has that left wrist tied up. Down to 12 seconds, 6 0. Jacobs with the lead. Over on this other mat, looks like two teammates wrestling possibly for the girls' match, both from Baker, I believe. They're down to 33 seconds in that one. Time runs out in the Picus match. Now Picus will go th both neutral. Girls 145 and boys 170. So back center circle as Picus chooses both neutral. Quick little shot in, nothing doing there. Jacobs fakes a shot in. They'll both tie up, center circle. 15 seconds in. Jacobs tries to shuck by, but uh, Pika's just gonna hold on to that head. Down to a minute 28. Pika's has to do a throw here, now down six. Now a little shot in by Jacobs, gonna grab the right leg. If he could step over, he's gonna get some points here, but uh, right now, holding on is Pikas to that left leg of Jacobs. Still no points awarded here. Now they're gonna get the two, and now Pikas gonna have to give it up, and now Pikas is to his back. Jacobs picked it up perfectly, and he has Pikas in trouble here with 55 seconds to go in this one in the 182-pound championship from Sturgis. Oh, got to turn your head the other way. He looked back, and I thought that shoulder went down very close, down to 40 seconds. And now Peek is going to roll back to his belly, but not after giving up three more points. So now makes it 11-0. Same move. Got the legs all wrapped up, bringing Pikas back to that is tight. It's gonna get back points. They're saying that left that left shoulder is off the uh, mat here. And now he'll roll back another three points, make it 14-0. Down to 10 seconds here. We'll see if he tries to get a tech fall here with seven seconds, and it doesn't look like he's gonna do it. Running down the two seconds, and that's how this period's gonna end as Tristan Picas will finish second place in his senior year at the Nighthawk Classic. Gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll have our final championship match. Nick Anderson is coming your way next here on KNDC. At 145 pounds in the girls' division, in second place, Sophia Schott, Crossing the County.
right, welcome back here. Championship match here. Nick Anderson and Jaden Gibson of Miles City going for the championship at 195 pounds. As we just get underway here, both will tie up here. First period, just kind of feeling things out here, but Nick Anderson's going to slip off here and luckily runs away from him, and they'll restart. 35 seconds in, Nick almost gave up a point there. And luckily, uh, we'll come back the other way. 195, 1 minute, 13 seconds. Quick little shot in by Anderson. Gibson holding on to that right ankle, left ankle trying to stay alive here. Anderson pulling that leg closer, trying to get a two-point takedown here. And right now, Gibson just holding on to that left ankle, still holding on to that left ankle. And now gives it up. Nick going a little bit deeper here. He has a shot. Now he's going to look for that double, but can't get it. And now stalemate's going to be called as they rolled around long enough. So no score, 25 seconds to go in this one. First period action. Anderson and Gibson, final match of the Classic here on KNDC. There'll be two more matches in the uh, championship matches at 220 and heavyweight. Nice little shot in by Anderson. Gibson now, Anderson trying to get off to the side, but Gibson doing a nice job holding on as time runs out in the first period. No score, we're back in the second period after this. Anderson on top to start second period. No score in this one. Gibson on the bottom, trying to get an escape point here, but Anderson gonna put those legs. Now Anderson in better position here. Gibson, he's gonna have to get back to his base and does. Now he just flattens out. And now Anderson looking at, oh, at the uh, potentially dangerous, gonna be a tech move. Went in half on both sides, We're looking for the full Nelson. Fingers touched. Get your penalty point. 1-0, so Gibson gets a freebie here in the second. Minute 22 to go here in the second. 195-pound championship. Gibson, we usually call it a quick sit-out, but Gibson's just sitting there. And now Anderson going to grab the leg, and now Gibson's going to roll on top, and he has Anderson in trouble. Anderson made a mistake. Slipped off, and Anderson to his back here. Gonna have to fight here for a whole minute, but boy, Gibson's going chest on chest, and it's tight. Anderson, I take that back. Forget that, it's not tight enough as he rolls out through it. He'll give up the three, so now a five-point move. So makes it now 6-0, Gibson. As now Anderson has his work cut out for him. After every championship match, a few more people live the, leave the gymnasium here. The girls' championship match is still going on. I'll go off the edge of the mat, 18 seconds to go, 6-0 Gibson. It's again Verdon taking home the championship. Only champion this weekend for the Nighthawks. Kaylee Olson finishes second. Pekus finishes second. Greff third. Hasbrook, Riley Hasbrook third. Chaleski and Frank both finishing fourth. Hasbrook. That's Bowden Hasbrook. Finishes in fourth. Time runs out here in the second period. Still 6 0 here. Choice goes to Anderson. He'll go up. So 
Anderson has his work cut out for him here. 6-0 going to go on top. He must have a super move from the top. Or either that or knows he can't get away from Gibson. Now caution on Gibson. So two minutes left in this one. Anderson in on the deep weight here, but now Gibson going to try to sit out, roll through, but Anderson going to go right with him to the edge of the mat. And now clasping is going to be called on Anderson, so he's going to give up a point. So another point given up for Anderson, and that's also going to be considered a stall. And now trails it here 7-0. Gibson, another set out here. Anderson trying to stay behind him. With a minute 30 to go in this championship match. Two more championship matches to go. You can tune into the stream team for those final two matches. Both in the girls and the boys. Both have two each. Once again, Gibson now does a stand up. Anderson going to bring him back, but now he slips off, and Gibson will pick up the two. So 9-0. So Gibson with the lead. Gibson out of Miles City, Montana. Leading at 9-0 here, trying to take home a team championship. Sturgis Brown will be your team champion for 2023. Yes. Gibson gets off to the side here, has the arm hooked up. Now he gets to the half put in, but uh, not nothing doing there from the right side. Now he goes back to the left side, grabbing that uh, forearm. Now we'll flop back down on Anderson with 30 seconds to go. And just kind of stalling it out here, so to speak, is Gibson. He's in no hurry to do much. He has Gibson. Still leads it here 9-0, and that looks like that is going to be the period. So your champion at 195 pounds will be Jaden Gibson of Miles City. Nick Anderson will finish in second place for the Nighthawks. So that wraps up our tournament coverage here on KDC Hedinger. Once again, Riley Hasbrook third, Shaleski fourth. Frank fourth, Graf third, Pika second, Anderson second, and Bowden Hasbrook fourth. Jennifer Verdon champion, Akalia Olson second place. That wraps up our Nighthawk Classic coverage here on KNDC Hedinger. I thank all of our great sponsors. Thanks to the team stream that has your video all weekend long. We'll be back on KNDC Hedinger hopefully Monday night. We're up in the new gym. Not sure of the uh, what they're going to have for radio up there. So hopefully we'll be able to get set up there and get the game on the air for you Monday night in the new gymnasium up in Kildare. Then we'll be up in Beulah on Tuesday night for boys basketball. Boys will head to Harding County on Thursday. We'll be heading to Richard and Taylor for girls basketball on Thursday. And then on Friday, girls head to Wilton. So a busy week for basketball. And looking at the rest of the schedule here for next weekend. As we head up to next weekend, as they will head to Miles City. Actually, I'm going to rewind a little bit for wrestlers because on the 10th, the wrestlers will be here, I believe. Doesn't show it on the schedule, but I believe there is a duel or a quadrangular here. Uh, Thursday, wrestlers will be wrestling a duel in Miles City before wrestling in the Miles City tournament on Friday and Saturday. But we'll update you on the Tuesday. Pretty sure there's wrestling on Tuesday, but nothing on the schedule. So next action, uh, tune in once again as we'll have... Uh, 
Girls basketball action Monday night in Kildare for a big Region 7 girls basketball matchup on KNDC Hedinger. 5.30 start for JV, 7 o'clock start for the varsity, and we'll have the action for you live from the new gymnasium in Kildare. That's going to wrap up our coverage here this afternoon. Actually, Cody Tomac is just joining us here. As we'll get both mics over here, I want to welcome you to the headset, Cody. Good evening. Thank you, thank you. Nice long weekend? Yes, it was. It was a very nice weekend, though. We had a lot of good strides. We had a lot of a little bit of heartbreak here and there, but we're going to work through it. Well, let's talk, uh, obviously, a long weekend. You started Thursday with a couple of duels. You got here Friday. They added the girls' tournament into it. Let's yep. talk about the girls. First of all, you had, obviously, Ellie Rosen still injured up. She wasn't yep. able to perform, right? Yes, correct. We're waiting on an impact test, and uh, hopefully she gets recovered from her concussion. Okay. And Jennifer Verdon and Kalia Olson, uh, two girls that had a chance to watch them a few matches here. Uh, leaps and bounds with those girls every time they hit the mat. Yes, every time. Every time they hit the mat, they're always learning something new. They're always uh, striving for perfection and all that stuff. Now, Verdon got a huge champion with a pin, and Akeli Olsen had a tough one. She ran up against a, a buzzsaw, so to speak, yeah. in her weight class. Yeah, Adelie, Adelie uh, Simmons there, she's a very good wrestler. She's yeah. very talented. She's got a lot of experience. Akeli, she's the young buck. She's got to just get, put more time to her, is it? And Verdon, she's still young too as well. Yes. She's got uh, next year as well, but uh, um, champion for her, that's kind of nice at the night Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely home crown advantage. Loved it. Uh, she's got a lot of experience. She knows where she wants to go. So. There you go. All right. Well, let's talk to boys real quickly. Um, we had some placers, a little banged up. It's, it's kind of weird. We, we went through the brackets, and I don't think I've ever seen six opens for the Nighthawks at, at a tournament before. Yeah, we're we're a little dinged up. We're getting getting recovered here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, they're they're doing pretty good. Okay. Let's uh, look at Riley Hasbrook. He took home third. He's uh, one of the young guys on the squad. He starts the. Uh, you gotta love it when your uh, young guys start things off for the uh, rest yep. of the team and duels. Riley, he's doing really well. Like like everybody else, he's learning as much as he can, and he's uh, running towards his, his goals and meeting his goals too. Kyler Shaleski, another young guy, he finishes fourth. He ran into a tough one in Gage Anderson of Lemon, and uh, you see those Anderson boys. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're learning a lot. Lemon's really down in wrestling. They don't have as many kids as they usually do, but uh, the ones that they do have uh, came to uh, perform this weekend. Yeah, they do have quite a quality kids uh, when it comes to the few that they have. Um, <clears throat> Kyler himself, he's he's a tough guy. Talent recognizes talent, you know. Yep. And Jaron Frank finished his fourth medical default. He got a little dinged up this weekend. Yep, Jaron, he's he's hurting a little bit. Uh, hopefully we're getting through it, though. Okay. Devin Greff had a nice little finish as his senior year, first year out, yeah. and uh, picks up a third place finish for himself, and he's got to be uh, awful happy with that performance. Oh yeah, I'm very ha very sure he's very happy with what, the way he performed and the way he's holding his head up. He's an awesome athlete. I yeah. love working with the kid. Uh, Tanner Blackwell did not place. He came out at four or five matches. Uh, lost his matches, but he's another kid too that's still learning in the process. He's on the peak. He's, he's going right over the mountain. He's coming right over the mountain. All right, so hopefully see him later on in the season. Uh, Tristan, we just saw him uh, finish in second place. Obviously, tough kid out of Sturgis. Yep, Buzz saw there. Uh, Reese Jacobs, he's been a uh, top performer down there in South Dakota, so we got to give him credit. But uh, <clears throat> we're still learning and striving from even from that match on to the big goal of state. Nick Anderson ran into big kid Miles City uh, Gibson, uh, wrestled him well. Just Conservative got up and uh, never really made any mistakes. Yeah. yeah, he didn't make mistakes and he pounced on our mistakes. Yeah. Bowden Hasbrook, he finished his fourth, first tournament back, and uh, got to be uh, happy to see his performance his first trip out. I tell you what, he was happy to get out. <laughs> he was happy to get out on the mat and actually do some work. Yeah, so he'll finish fourth, but uh, yeah, it, it's crazy only talking about six kids. Uh, in the lineup, but toward the end of the year, you're going to get some other kids back in there. And you have uh, a quadrangular now on Tuesday the 10th. It's not listed on the schedule, but I did get reassurance from somebody yep. out there. They text me. Yep. And who's going to be here? Uh, I believe it's Lemon, or no, no, excuse me. Uh, it should be Bowman. Bowman, yep. Bowman, uh, Kildare, right? Yeah. I think Kildare and, and New Salem, I think. I think. 
and then us. will be here. Yeah. Well, well we, we know for sure Bowman. Yeah. Bowman will be here for Bowman sure. Bowman will be here. Hedinger Strand will be here. Come over Tuesday night. Uh, boys basketball is up in Beulah that night. Um, it's just going to be a busy week for Nighthawk busing, too. You guys had the Miles City then on Thursday for a duel, mm -hmm. and then a, a big weekend. Miles City is always one where you guys like going over there. Yep, that, that's usually our fun tournament. We always like to go out there and, and show those Montana boys what North Dakota wrestling's all about. There you go. And it's kind of nice to see all these teams, 18 teams here this yep. weekend. And we're covering all across the border, so we got Montana, Wyoming, we got South Dakota, and as well as North Dakota. we got to work on a Minnesota team to come yeah, we should. We get should like try to East get one. Grand Forks. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, appreciate the time, Porter. Thanks for coming up. We'll look forward to talking to you in a couple weeks. Uh, you know, once again, uh, you're kind of in charge of the girls, right? Yep. Okay, so you'll have the three girls, hopefully, like you said. Uh, um, Ellie will be back wrestling yep. uh, next weekend. Yep, full and healthy and ready to roll. All right, yeah, she looks like she was walking around here like she wanted to beat up somebody. Yep. So I stayed away from her. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure she wants to get back out on the map. So, yep. all right, thanks, Cody, for taking time out, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. All right, there you go, Cody Tomac. Uh, thank you for coming up here and uh, chatting with us here on KMC and of course on KMC. All right, that's going to wrap up our coverage, and we'll send it back to the studios and be back for girls basketball action on Monday night here on KMC.
from Shining of you? Nate Colt Blue Coat. In fourth place from Sturgis, Tice Uherka. In third place from Sturgis, Dakari Brown. In second place from Moorcroft, Oliver Gorsuch. And your champion at 285 from Watford City, Navon Hayes. with 178 points. Heading your screen. 